Welcome to Celeb Memorial TV, the place where we celebrate and honor the legacies of remarkable individuals whose talents and achievements have left a memorable impact on our world. In each episode, we share news, heartfelt tributes, and cherished memories of those who have recently passed. Subscribe to our channel to stay connected and join our community in remembering and celebrating these extraordinary lives. Join us as we pay tribute to their enduring contributions and keep their stories alive. Johnny Wachter, known for his compelling portrayal of Brando Corbin in General Hospital, was an accomplished actor who appeared in over 160 episodes of the series between 2020 and 2022. His extensive career also included notable roles in high-profile television series such as Westworld, The OA, and NCIS. Tragically, Wachter was killed at the age of 37 during an alleged theft attempt in downtown Los Angeles. Wachter's acting journey began with his television debut in Army Wives, and he quickly established himself in the industry with his dynamic performances. Throughout his career, he worked on several short films and took on diverse roles across various genres, demonstrating his versatility and dedication to his craft. Beyond his professional achievements, Johnny was deeply appreciated for his generosity and kindness, characteristics that resonated with everyone who knew him personally or professionally. His sudden death has left a profound void in the acting community and among his extensive fan base. Johnny's legacy extends beyond his screen appearances. He was also active in various community and charitable efforts, particularly focusing on issues related to the arts and education. His passion for his work and his commitment to making a positive impact were evident to all who knew him. As the entertainment community and his fans mourn his loss, they also celebrate the indelible mark he left through his powerful performances and personal endeavors. Johnny Wachter's spirit and legacy will continue to inspire those in the acting world and beyond. Daryl Hickman, who passed away at the age of 92 on May 22nd, leaves behind a rich legacy that traversed the worlds of film, television, and theater. Born into a family deeply rooted in the performing arts, Hickman's career began in the glow of Hollywood's golden age, marking him as one of the most distinguished child actors of his time. From his poignant portrayal of Winfield Joad in John Ford's The Grapes of Wrath to his role in the melodrama Leave Her to Heaven, Hickman demonstrated an exceptional depth and range from a very young age. Beyond his early start in cinema, Hickman's career was notable for its longevity and diversity. He transitioned into adult roles with grace, appearing in numerous television shows and films while also making significant contributions behind the scenes as a television executive and acting coach. His commitment to the craft of acting was profound, demonstrated through his work as an educator and author, where he shared his deep understanding of the actor's psychological journey. Hickman's personal life was touched by both celebration and tragedy, reflecting the complex narrative of a public figure who experienced the spectrum of what life has to offer. Despite personal challenges, including the heartbreaking loss of his son, he continued to engage with his art form, enriching the lives of those who would follow in his footsteps. As we remember Daryl Hickman, we celebrate not just the roles he played on screen, but his substantial impact on the acting community through his teaching and his passionate dedication to the arts. His contributions have left an indelible mark on Hollywood and its history, ensuring his memory will endure in the annals of cinema and beyond. Charlie Collin, who passed away unexpectedly at the age of 57 on May 17th, was an influential musician known for his foundational role in the renowned rock band Train. Born on November 22, 1966, in Newport Beach, California, Collins' early passion for music led him to a pivotal transfer from the University of Southern California to Berklee College of Music, where he honed his skills and deepened his commitment to his craft. As a founding member of Train, Collin was integral to the band's formation and early success. He contributed not only as a bassist, but also added depth with his background vocals, helping to define the band's sound. Train's rise to fame was marked by hits such as Meet Virginia and the Grammy-winning Drops of Jupiter, with the latter becoming a defining anthem of the early 2000s. Despite facing personal challenges, including substance abuse that led to his departure from Train in 2003, Collins' resilience and passion for music drove him to continue his career in various projects. 
He was part of Food Pill and later formed Pain Birds, demonstrating his versatility and enduring creativity. In 2017, he co-founded The Side Deal, blending his musical talents with other notable artists and continuing to perform live. Beyond his musical career, Colin was a devoted art collector, homeless artist advocate, and philanthropist, deeply engaged in his community. His later years were spent teaching and sharing his love for music as a musical director and educator, impacting many through his artistic and charitable endeavors. Charlie Collins' legacy is marked by his profound influence on the music industry, his resilience in the face of personal adversity, and his generous spirit. His contributions to music and community will not be forgotten as they continue to inspire those who were touched by his talent and compassion. Morgan Spurlock, who passed away at the age of 53 on May 23rd due to complications related to cancer, was a provocative figure in the world of documentary filmmaking. Born on November 7, 1970 in Parkersburg, West Virginia, Spurlock gained notoriety and acclaim for his audacious approach to exploring societal issues through his films. Spurlock's most famous work, Super Size Me, 2004, was a groundbreaking documentary that criticized the fast food industry and sparked public discussion about health and nutrition. His experiment of eating only McDonald's meals for 30 days had significant personal health consequences and led to broader debates about corporate responsibilities and health policies. The film was nominated for an Academy Award and won the first Writers Guild of America Award for Best Documentary Screenplay. Beyond Super Size Me, Spurlock was prolific in his output, creating other notable documentaries like Where in the World is Osama Bin Laden? and The Greatest Movie Ever Sold, which explored themes of consumerism and corporate influence. His television series, 30 Days, further showcased his talent for immersive journalism, placing individuals in life situations vastly different from their own to highlight social issues. Despite his contributions to film and television, Spurlock's career was marred by his own admission of past, which he publicly acknowledged in 2017. This confession was a pivotal moment that led to his resignation from his production company and significantly impacted his professional legacy. Spurlock's personal struggles, his innovative storytelling, and his willingness to challenge societal norms left a complex legacy. His work encouraged audiences to question the world around them and sparked important conversations that continue to resonate in the documentary filmmaking industry. His passing is a loss to a community that values deep inquiry and bold expression. Jeannie Epper, a trailblazer in the stunt industry and an iconic figure in Hollywood, passed away at the age of 83 on May 5th due to complications from an infection. Born into a family of stunt performers on January 27, 1941, in Glendale, California, Epper transformed the landscape of stunt work for women in film and television. Starting her stunt career at the tender age of nine under the tutelage of her father, John Epper, Jeannie broke through significant gender barriers in a field dominated by men. Her most famous role was as Linda Carter's stunt double in the groundbreaking 1970s television series, Wonder Woman. Her work extended to other iconic shows such as The Bionic Woman and Charlie's Angels, where she doubled for Lindsay Wagner and Kate Jackson, respectively. Epper's contributions to film included breathtaking stunts in high-profile movies like Romancing the Stone, Kill Bill, Volume 2, and Minority Report. Her dedication to the craft earned her the 1985 Annual Stuntman Award for Most Spectacular Stunt and a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Taurus World Stunt Awards in 2007, marking her as the first woman to receive this honor. Beyond her stunt work, Jeannie was a founding member and one-time president of the Stunt Women's Association of Motion Pictures, advocating for recognition and better roles for women in stunts. Her personal life was as dynamic as her career. She was married four times and raised children who followed in her stunt footsteps, continuing her legacy within the industry. Jeannie Epper's impact on Hollywood was profound, paving the way for future generations of stunt women. Her daring spirit and pioneering efforts not only changed how women are viewed in the stunt industry, but also highlighted their capabilities in performing complex and dangerous stunts. 
Epper lived her life as boldly as the stunts she performed, leaving behind a legacy that will endure in cinematic history. Susan Buckner, a cherished figure in the entertainment world, passed away at the age of 72 on May 2nd in Miami, Florida. Born on January 28, 1952 in Seattle, Washington, Buckner first captured public attention as Miss Washington in 1971, later securing a spot as a top 10 finalist in the Miss America 1972 pageant. Her standout performance in the swimsuit preliminary and her charisma laid the groundwork for her transition into the entertainment industry. Susan Buckner's career is best remembered for her portrayal of Patty Simcox, the quintessential high school cheerleader in the 1978 cultural phenomenon Grease, alongside stars Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta. This role cemented her place in Hollywood and endeared her to fans worldwide. Beyond Grease, she was a member of the Gold Diggers on The Dean Martin Show, showcasing her talents in singing and dancing, and appeared in other variety shows such as The McDavis Show and Sonny and Cher. Her involvement in the Brady Bunch Variety Hour as one of the Croftettes displayed her versatility in performing synchronized swimming routines, further highlighting her diverse talents. Despite a promising career in showbiz, Susan chose to step back from the limelight to focus on raising her two children, a decision that speaks to her dedication to family. Throughout her life, Susan Buckner remained a beloved figure not only for her artistic talents, but also for her warmth and vibrant spirit. Her legacy in the entertainment industry and her role as a devoted mother will be fondly remembered by those who knew her and the many fans who admired her from afar. James Lawrenson, who passed away at the age of 84, was a distinguished New Zealand-born actor whose extensive career spanned both stage and screen in the United Kingdom. Born in Martin, North Island, New Zealand, Lawrenson moved to the UK in the mid-1960s after honing his acting skills under the guidance of Dame Ngaio Marsh at Canterbury University College in Christchurch. Lawrenson's career was marked by a wide range of performances, from Shakespearean roles in Richard II and Hamlet, to his memorable part in the 1970 production of Edward II opposite Ian McKellen. He gained significant recognition for his portrayal of Detective Inspector Napoleon Boney Bonaparte in the Australian TV series Boney, a role that, despite its controversies, highlighted his dynamic acting range. His notable film appearances include his role in Women in Love and as Pink's father in the iconic 1982 film Pink Floyd The Wall. Lawrenson also shown on the musical stage, notably in the West End production of 42nd Street in 1984, showcasing his versatility across different genres of performance. Beyond the theater and big screen, Lawrenson was a familiar face on television, with roles in popular series such as The Professionals, Inspector Morse, and The Crown. His work extended into radio, where he performed in adaptations such as Daphne du Maurier's Jamaica Inn. Off stage and outside the limelight, Lawrenson was a resident of Frome, Somerset, where he lived from 2006 until his passing. His legacy is remembered not only for the breadth of his roles, but also for his ability to deeply connect with his characters, bringing a unique and powerful presence to each performance. James Lawrenson's contributions to the arts have left an indelible mark on both audiences and the acting community. Breaking news. News 1. Haley Herbert, celebrated dancer and newlywed, faced an abrupt halt in her life and career when she needed emergency brain surgery last December. Just months into the Symphony of Dance tour with her husband, Derek Ho, Herbert was diagnosed with a cranial hematoma, requiring a critical craniectomy to alleviate pressure in her skull. Despite the daunting challenge, Herbert's spirit remained unbroken. By April, after a determined recovery, she triumphantly resumed the tour, receiving a standing ovation at her comeback performance in Melbourne, Florida. Reflecting on her journey on Instagram, Herbert expressed profound gratitude, stating the tour reignited many parts of me that have been dim for so long. Her story is a testament to resilience, capturing the hearts of fans and proving the strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. News 2. International superstar Nicki Minaj was released on Saturday after a brief detainment at Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport. The acclaimed rapper faced allegations related to the possession of soft substance, but was fined and allowed to proceed to her next destination. 
Minaj, who is currently on her Pink Friday Second World Tour, was en route to Manchester, England, for a scheduled performance at the Co-op Live Arena. Unfortunately, due to the day's events, the concert was postponed. Live Nation UK expressed their disappointment over the inconvenience caused to fans, assuring that tickets will be honored for the rescheduled date. Authorities confirmed the arrest of a 41-year-old American woman at the airport without naming Minaj directly. However, the circumstances described match those of the artist.